dinosaur. That's always been our advantage. You can get away from the lights and get away from the idiots. You can filter through if, uh, I mean, I always happen to be in bold position there, but if there was other traffic in the right lane, I'd have filtered down the middle and gone. when, oh well, it's still the case, you know, you had to go and spend mega dollars on a supercar to come even close to what you could do on a $4,000 street bike in terms of that 0 to 100 kilometres an hour or 0 to 60 if you're watching in black and white. But the other day I was sitting in a set of traffic lights and there was a, a Tesla. Uh, on the opposite side of the intersection, he was he had pole position at the uh, traffic light Grand Prix. And when the light turned green, I watched him disappear. And I thought, oh my God, there goes our advantage. You know, we we are going to uh, lose that when when electric vehicles become more prominent. Because typically, I mean, electric motors deliver 100% of their torque right off the bat. It falls off a cliff once the RPMs get up, but uh, but yeah, they do get out very quickly. Now I guess that got me thinking about electric vehicles, because uh, of course it's not just cars, it's bikes as well. And uh, I've got to admit, you know, like as a kid, I had uh, slot cars and uh, radio controlled cars. And, and we all know how much fun they can be, how, how fast they can accelerate. But the bloody thing that hasn't changed, and, and there is nothing new under the sun, as AVE would say the batteries. They're just not there with that technology yet. And I don't know if they'll ever be. It's that, it's the range. And in a country like Australia, with such large distances, I don't know whether or not that's practical. You want to go for a, a, a one day ride, and by the time you reach the halfway point in your destination, you've got to bloody charge your battery for eight hours. But I mean, if it's a, if it's a small, lightweight dirt bike and you just want to go and have a bit of fun in a paddock somewhere, and you don't mind um, the pace that it, uh, the, the speed that it, the battery depletes, then great. Because of course, you know, we're trying to move away from our reliance on fossil fuels. And like I said at the beginning, I'm a dinosaur. So, you know, it's, it's something that I may not have to deal with in my lifetime, maybe. Uh, I might be able to gleefully, ignorantly drive petrol burning, fossil fuel consuming transportation. And it's not just vehicles, I mean, people are pushing for renewable energy all over the place uh, in an attempt to reduce the hydrofluorocarbon greenhouse effect. But these things, heh, how are you going to have electric trucks anyway? But the problem with electricity is that it's a real um, demand and supply kind of thing. And re renewables. Um, well, they're all very nice and fuzzy, and yes, you can generate electricity from a wind farm, and yes, you can generate solar electricity, but the bloody problem is, it's not enough, um, because that, it's not, it's not scaled yet, it's not, a, it's not scalable yet. 
we still need to have power stations that can uh, ramp up and ramp down base loads and, and cover peak loads. Because you can't, what are you going to, when, you know, when the sun goes down at night, which is when part of our peak energy use is, there's no electricity being generated. So the only answer is to store it somewhere. In Tasmania, we store it in uh, in a very different method. We use uh, water storage, <laughs> so hydroelectricity. There's a very extensive um, hydroelectric system in Tasmania. It was essentially built to. Um, To operate the zinc smelter. My Christ, don't those things choose some power? But we sell that power across the ditch to the mainland and we buy their dirty power. It's, it's a stupid setup, but anyway, I'm not going to get into the semantics and politics of that. <coughs> but yes, we need a, you need to have some sort of battery storage and a way of, ma of, of managing that excess power that's. Or, or any excess power that you can produce. But we all know anything anything we own with a battery usually doesn't doesn't uh, hold up very well. I mean take our motorcycles for example, yes you can get lithium batteries now and I have one on uh, basket case for a quite a long time, for years actually until it all went pear-shaped and uh, I then made the decision from my own personal preference to move away from lithium-ion and uh, go back to an AGM battery but um, you know, the problem with lithium is it, it's, it's good, it's good, it's good, it's good and then bang it's flat and the more you recharge them the um, uh, they just seem to fall away, I don't know, look at your telephone, you know, batteries die if you don't uh, manage the charge on them properly. And what's going to happen with electric cars is people aren't going to want to wait. You know, they're they're going to go on a drive somewhere and then they're not going to wait 8 hours to recharge their battery, they're going to go to a quick charge station and that's going to shorten the life of the batteries. The other disadvantage is they don't make any noise so they're bloody quiet now I believe that there are some countries and even some states within countries that are sort of going to mandate or looking at mandating or are mandating um, that they do generate some form of artificial noise to warn pedestrians and other users that uh, they're, they're, they're there and as a motorcyclist you can almost distinctively know the sound of the different motorcycles, you know, you, you, you all know the sound of the Harley Davidson and a Ducati and even the uh, cross-plane R1s are distinctive, like every motorcycle has its own distinctive note and um, you know, that's something that's lacking, I think, in the electric vehicles. The power delivery is awesome I've never ridden one, I've never driven one, but uh, I just know that I like watched that Tesla to disappear away into the into a the other day at the traffic lights uh, drove it home to me. I don't know whether um, I'd like to try and sell one if I had one second hand. The other, the other thing that I think is an issue is uh, with electric vehicles is that they generate a lot of current and it's serious current and it can really uh, cause a lot of damage to property and to people. And uh, I believe that the emergency services have a lot of concerns about how they would handle uh, an accident 
for example, with um, an electric vehicle? How do they know it's safe to grab a hold of the door handle and try and get the, the occupants out of the vehicle or, or go into it with a set of hydraulic cutters and know that they're not going to be chopping through a high current cable or... Uh, and when, when lithium catches fire, uh, there's no stopping it. So there's all of that, uh, that safety side of it, I guess, uh, in terms of the emergency response teams in, in the event of an accident, that's, that's an issue. So the batteries, in, in my view, are the biggest, the biggest pain in the ass. There's the noise factor or lack there of it. Uh, there's the danger of trying to, um, you know, rescue occupants from a, from a, a, a motor vehicle accident. Uh, the risk of fire, the charge time, there's all of these issues. And, uh, you know, well, there's lots of people out there trying to embrace a cleaner, cleaner environment. At the end of the day, you've still got to generate electricity to charge these bastards. And until we have a solution on renewable energy, which we don't have at the moment, we're going to be burning more coal. We're going to be lighting more fires under flame and under power stations and um, even uh, you know, nuclear power stations, which are a clean source of energy. I think, you know, that's the future is nuclear. But anyway, well, that's a whole other debate. We're still, coal and natural gas are going to be uh, our fallback and um, the more electric vehicles on the road, the more electricity we have to produce, guess what? The more coal and natural gas we're going to burn. That's the honest truth about it, I guess. So at the end of the day, do I like electric vehicles? I like the idea of them. I like the, uh, you know, like they would be awesome, awesome to ride if they, if and when they ever get a ride. Uh, in terms of the sheer thrill, you know, the acceleration. I mean, those motorcycles, we know what that's like. And, and I've, I've always sort of had fairly high-powered cars as well. Currently, I've got a four-cylinder turbocharged petrol thing, which currently burns in excess of 100 litres per 100 kilometres when you're on full boost. My message is that we'll be watching you. accelerates it doesn't accelerate like a like a motorcycle but you know you, you, I like that I like speed and power though I love that there's lots of people that say that that's just you know, selfish and all the rest of it well maybe it is but that's what I do that's my thing I love the sound I love the vibration I love the smells I guess what one of the advantages of having electric vehicles is that there's very little in the ter in the way of moving parts. So you know, you just get on a grip it and rip it. You don't have to worry about doing valve clearances and doing oil changes and all of those kind of things. I think it'd be really cool rather than having a linear, uh, like instantaneous system where there's no clutch and there's just a belt drive and. You know, you have a potentiometer speed uh, and throttle. I think it'd be good if they did actually have a gearbox and a clutch. And... Otherwise, we're all just bloody robots, aren't we? We want to get on. We want to get on it and, and, and experience it. Well, I can't speak for everyone, but I know I do. 
I want to have input and I want to have feedback. Anyway, let me know your thoughts in the comments. And don't forget to like and subscribe and I will catch you next time on Andy's Motorcycle Obsessions. Bye for now.